Well, it is desperately sad, and uh, it's uh, an irony that we came here to celebrate National Day with you, uh, and as it is now, we're mourning for the loss of our, of our common sovereign, uh, and uh, that's a very sad day for us all. It is a reminder, of course, of the strength of the links between Gibraltar uh, and the UK, and you can see here people queuing up to go into the convent to sign the book of condolences, uh, and the, the sense of genuine sadness and loss that I know that we're picking up from Gibraltarians everywhere we're, we're going. Um, uh, she was such an amazing servant to U the UK, to all of the territories, to Gibraltar, and it says it all, doesn't it, that only two days ago she was still doing her duty, giving an audience to commission a new Prime Minister to form a government. She, she promised to, to serve for the whole of her life, and she absolutely did that. Um, what more can one, one say about such an amazing person? and I shall certainly be going back to London and taking back um, the sentiments that I picked up from everybody in Gibraltar. Um, the sense of sadness and loss equally binds us together as all part of the British family and I know we'll all be um, determined to give our support uh, and loyalty to His Majesty uh, the King, King Charles III, uh, King of uh, all his territories of Gibraltar uh, and uh, of us and uh, our common sovereign once again. Uh, now you've been here of course with all the uh, MPs, uh, all of the representatives of, of the Parliament who were uh, in Gibraltar for National Day. Tell us uh, what the mood is like uh, among them. Uh, well, I think everybody is, is saddened. It, it's a shock even though you know uh, that uh, when someone is of that age, no one uh, is immortal. Um, but it's still a sense of shock and of course for virtually all of us, none of us mostly have really known any other monarch, have we? Um, so it's, a, it's been profoundly uh, sad. Um, though I think also a, a sense of recognition uh, of, of that life of service and something we're right in the UK, as you can see, political differences are being put aside, as I know they are here in Gibraltar to and throughout the Commonwealth. Um, but uh, it, the normal business, important and pressing though that is, takes second place um, today. Um, and uh, as part of your visits, I know that you always uh, love to uh, be among the people of Gibraltar, speaking to them. We've been seeing you speaking to some of the people in the queue to sign the book. Uh, what have they been telling you? I think they've been telling me just uh, how sad they are uh, at Her Majesty's passing, but also how grateful they all are uh, for the service that she gave uh, to all of the British family um, and asking me and my colleagues to convey back back to our, uh, our friends and colleagues in the UK, that sense of solidarity. I, I'm very conscious, a number of people mentioned to me how enthusiastic they were uh, when the Earl and Countess of Wessex uh, visited. It's a sadness that Her Majesty was only able to visit so many years ago and wasn't able to get back. I know many Gibraltarians would have wished that. Um, but uh, it is a, a very moving um, uh, sentiment that, that we're getting and we're all very, very touched. Um, uh, as UK parliamentarians uh, by the love uh, that Her Majesty, Her Late Majesty, was, was clearly held in.